Hello, I'm Miss Tiffany and I'm going to read you part of a book today called Images of God. And we're going to think about God because we don't have any pictures of God, do we? We don't even have any pictures of Jesus who was God on earth. So let's think about that, shall we? This is a book by Marie-Hélène Delval with pictures by Barbara Nassembeni. God has a face. No one has seen God, but Jesus came to us. He was born and grew up living on earth like all of us. Jesus told us that God is his father and our father. In Jesus, God took on a body and a face. Those who saw him and touched him have told us about him. Can you see Jesus in that picture? He was on the donkey. Did you notice? We don't see his face, though, in this one. But Jesus did have a face, of course. God is our tears. If he weren't, how would he understand our tears? How would he cry when we cry? But God has promised that one day he will wipe away all the tears from every eye and sadness will no longer exist. Hmm. I wonder what that will be like. Here's a picture. Do you think that Jesus is in the tears of that little boy? I think that's what it's telling us, right? God is joy. All that God created comes from this joy, including you. The thousands of beautiful sights on the earth the millions of living creatures, the great whirl of stars in the heavens. These are an echo of his laughter. And when our hearts celebrate, we share in God's laughter and joy. Look at all of the things there are in this picture. What a fun picture this is, right? There's a little boy on a swing in outer space and there's a moon and sun and stars and planets but there's also an elephant and a bird and fish and flowers and a turtle and the leaf from a tree that makes me feel joyful now an idea for you is to imagine what God looks like or Jesus and draw a picture. Draw a picture of what you think Jesus might have looked like. Draw a picture of God. How do you think God looks? And if you draw a picture of Jesus, draw a picture of Jesus feeling sad crying tears like it says he cried tears with you and draw a picture of happy Jesus. Our next image is strength. God is strength. There is no love stronger than God's 
no gentleness or tenderness more powerful than God's. All that God has given us, forgiveness, life, joy, comes from God's great strength. And yet, God does so with such gentleness that no one is forced to accept. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Can you think of ways that Jesus is strong and ways that Jesus is gentle? Can you think of an animal that is strong and an animal that is gentle? Maybe it's the same animal. Draw a picture if you like. Here's the picture in the book. An elephant is very big and very strong, but can also be very gentle. And the little children are enjoying the elephant's gentleness right now. God is a spring. A spring is water, fresh water flowing like a stream. No one can live without water. As our bodies are thirsty for water, our souls are thirsty for love and for beauty and for goodness, for justice and for truth. God is all of these things and more. God is the source of all of these things. They all come from God. And God invites us to drink from this spring. And there's a little girl and a bird taking a drink from a spring of water. Can you imagine how cool and refreshing that water is? Bread, God is bread. We need to eat, to live, to grow, and to be strong. Bread is a symbol of everything that gives life, of everything that nourishes the earth's people. If we do not have anything to eat, we die. God wants us to live. God has given us Jesus. And Jesus, in giving us the bread of his body, gives us never-ending life from God. Hmm, something else to wonder about. Does that make you think of communion in church? Look at this picture. Do you see the bread on the table and all the children around the table? Whose hands do you think those might be? Can you imagine yourself having bread with Jesus? You know, since God is water and bread, why don't you make yourself a piece of toast? And you can put anything on it that you like butter, cinnamon and sugar, peanut butter, and get a cup and fill it with water to drink and have yourself a snack and think about God while you have your snack. Say thank you to God for the clean water to drink and the food to eat. Say thank you to God for giving us Jesus and say thank you to Jesus for giving us himself. I have one more image to share with you. God is a promise. Because of this, we can be sure that life is stronger than death and that love is stronger than hate. Because of God, we can believe that goodness will one day fill all the earth and that there will no longer be any wickedness because God has, has promised this. 
and we can help make this promise come true a little each day. And before I show you this picture, I'll give you another activity suggestion. And that is, can you make a promise to God? Make a promise of something that you will do and see if you can keep that promise. And then here, you could draw a picture of it if you like, or you could just talk about it or pray about it. And here we have our last picture of an image of God as a promise. What do you think of this picture? I think that bird is a dove and we often think of doves as a promise because of the story of Noah's Ark. And God made a promise with a dove then and with the rainbow. How would you like to fly on a dove? Or fly on a bird like this girl. Wouldn't that be fun? Feel free and light? Anyway, those are some ideas for images of God. And there are others in here that we didn't read. We might read some of them another time. But it gives us something to think about, doesn't it? I wonder what God looks like. I wonder what God is like. Do you have any other ideas for what God is like? Did you have a favorite from this? Anyway, we continue our Lenten journey, which means that we are almost to Easter, but not quite. And we remember always that God loves us. So remember, God is always with you. Jesus walks with you, cries with you, laughs with you loves you. Have a good week. Bye.